delighted to uh, introduce Rochelle Wilner. Rochelle, how are you? Great to have well, you here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm going to tell people a little bit about you. Uh, Rochelle Wilner is a past pe president of B'nai Canada, certified teacher of the province of Ontario with additional qualifications in special education. She is a community leader and activist and has long been is interested in issues affecting the Jewish community uh, with particular, particular expertise in furthering Holocaust education in this country and combating anti-Semitism. She volunteered her time and dedicated herself to many different organizations, served on numerous education committees and boards of education. Prior to her election as national president of B'nai B'rith, Rochelle was a national chair of the League for Human Rights, and she also chaired the Holocaust and Hope Committee of B'nai B'rith. So, Rochelle, great resume <laughs> and delighted to, to have you with us. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. Okay, Rochelle, I know that there was recently this conference in Toronto called Looking Back, Moving Forward, and you emceed this uh, particular conference? No, I didn't MC the conference. I only acted as MC at the reception, at the reception. during the conference. Okay. But uh, this conference was one of the best conferences that I've ever attended, and I've been to many. Mm -hmm. um, the, um, the, the, the cornerstone of the conference was the MS St. Louis. Right. Okay. Uh, the bo the boat, you know, and and when I say yes. that to you, what 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 does that evoke in your thoughts? What may, what do you think of when you hear the name M S St. Louis? That well, boat? I d I didn't know anything about it when uh, Karen Lazar from Neighbor asked me about. It, I didn't, but I I've since read a, a little bit, so I know about the story, but I didn't. So maybe you can share with us uh, what it's all about. Well, well, for for so many people, and especially the Holocaust survivors, their families, their circle. That particular boat, the name of that boat, although it wasn't the only boat denied mm -hmm. entry and denied access, serves as the, uh, I guess, the common lexicon for not wanted, undesirable, right. no place to go. Um, the, the MS St. Louis was mm -hmm. a commercial passenger boat. Right. Uh, in May of 1939, mm -hmm. some 930-odd people people boarded the boat yes. thinking that they had purchased legitimate and valid entry visas into Cuba mm -hmm. where they could wait until they could gain entry into the United States. Okay. When the boat arrived uh, at, in, in Cuba, yes. they were denied access. They weren't allowed to get off the boat right. except for some 20 odd people who did have valid visas. And the reason the visas weren't valid was because they had an immigration officer who was selling phony visas uh -huh. okay. to people and, and of course they looked legitimate and these individuals in Germany had no way of knowing that they weren't valid. Right. Uh, after, after begging the Americans to let them in mm -hmm. and asking the Canadians to let them in, right. they turned around and went back to Europe. Right. So nobody let them in, including Canada. Nobody, nobody let them in, including Canada. And unfortunately, that was Canada's sorry history mm -hmm. from that era. You know, the era of none is too many. Right. And so this government, in its attempts to redress or acknowledge, I mean, it's hard to redress that kind of wrong, but acknowledge that kind of wrong, mm -hmm. decided to host this conference in partnership with B'nai B'rith Canada, the government of the United States of America, mm -hmm. and the government of France. Right. And the, this conference was the final step Canada had to take to gain access and entry and, uh, and I guess, a position on the International Task Force, mm -hmm. which was a task force created by the Swedish Prime Minister uh, back in 1998, right. announced publicly in Sweden at Stockholm, at the Stockholm International Conference on Holocaust Education, uh, Memory and Remembrance in 2000. And, and I have to confess, I was there as an official delegate of our uh, representing our country. And it was quite an exciting moment when the government of Sweden announced this ongoing initiative. Right. Um, Canada was uh, somewhat late in mm -hmm. getting into the game, uh, but in 1997, uh, Minister Jason Kenney yes. um, 
applied, put mm -hmm. in an application form, and there were various steps, you know, that had to be taken. But because of our strong Holocaust education programming, and because of our Canadian, our Canadian commitment mm -hmm. that was already there prior to uh, putting in this application form, uh, the process was not a difficult one, and certainly one that the government agreed to undertake. Right. And so now that that this conference is complete, and this conference, I must say, brought together. Uh, all the stakeholders. Mm -hmm. They they brought together the the government officials, they brought, uh, NGOs, survivor families, yes. educators, and and brought them together in one venue. Uh, with the purpose of moving forward, which is why the conference had its name, Looking Back, Moving Forward. We learn from our past. Yes. Because if we don't, we are very likely to repeat our past. Sure, And sure. We, have, we have evidence today. Yes. You know, the Holocaust didn't start with uh, concentration camps. And the Holocaust didn't start with bombs and mm -hmm. with guns and warriors. The Holocaust started with words. Yes. with words that marginalized a specific community. Mm -hmm. and, and the ideology of acceptable hate became commonplace. Right. And we only have to look at the level of anti-Semitism today, not, not just here in Canada, but globally, right. to say we, we have reason to be concerned, we have reason to look back and to move forward. Right. Rochelle, how did you get into um, uh, developing this passion and commitment to doing, you know, spending all this time in, in your life helping B'nai B'rith and, and uh, helping Jewish causes? What, what was the motivating factor for you? By accident. Mm -hmm. I mean, the truth is, I, I you know, it just happened. Uh, it was serendipitous. Uh, there was a program that needed coordinating way back, and it was an educational initiative. It sounded it interesting it sounded challenging I was looking for something interesting and challenging right. and you know what they say once you get involved and you do something and it's successful you just keep getting asked sure. to do more sure and I've always been I don't I don't have Holocaust survivor parents mm -hmm. my parents fortunately came here in the early 20s but we do have uh, survivor relatives and it's something I've always been interested in and concerned about that we don't forget and that we honor the memory of those who didn't survive and that we honor and respect those who did. Yes. You know, I, I, I often say when I speak to survivors that I marvel at their capacity, at their capacity to have survived. Mm -hmm. But survival in that context is a matter of, I, I, I think it's just something within a person. You do what you can to survive. It's a right. human instinct. Right. But then to survive and, and move on. Right. And to create a life sure. in, in a foreign country with foreign languages. Mm -hmm. Many of them came here without language, without any financial resources, without family support. And they managed to make lives for themselves and become productive, contributing Canadians. Right. Uh, I marvel at that capacity. Yeah. Well, um, Rochelle, uh, we, we seem to have a very supportive uh, government, federal government in particular, people like Jason Kenney um, and Stephen Harper uh, have been very supportive. I mean, this event is a great example. I know Jason Kenney was there at uh, part of the ceremonies and, and what have you. Well, Rochelle, unfortunately, we're going to have to wrap up because we are, we're out of time. And uh, but it wasn't I, enough. <laughs> it wasn't enough. So will you come back? Absolutely. Okay. Good. Anytime. Now yeah. I know where you are. <laughs> okay. You know where to find us. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you so much for, you. for coming in, and we'll definitely have you back soon to, thank to talk you. for. Thank you. I look really forward to that. It. That would thank be fantastic. You. So that's a wrap for today's show uh, on Mensch Life on thatchannel.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.